of things in a different order. So let's start with multiple intelligence. What is intelligence? Who is intelligent? And what do we need to be intelligent? I'm not going to ask you to call out at the moment. Um, in a small group, I would ask to go around, but I think we need to speed on a little bit now. So we will move on and find out some of the answers. Now, the idea of intelligence has changed over time, but the usual understanding of intelligence is very often based on the result of a test. And Alfred Binet is the person who is best known for setting an IQ test in his French. And it was originally set in the 1900s, at the beginning of the last century, to find out which children would succeed in Paris schools. And when we talk about succeeding, we're talking about actually those who are going to be leaders. In those days, that was all that mattered. Education was to lead, to run the country. So what was needed was people who were good at linguistics, and mathematics, so you would have been very lucky in the past. But if you were good at other things, you took the test and you failed. You were a failure. You weren't intelligent. Is that true? Mozart, the musician, was he not intelligent? Leonardo da Vinci, was he not intelligent? Not a mathematician, well yes, he was a mathematician, but not a linguist. You think of famous people who have not been linguists, who have not been mathematicians, but who have succeeded very much in their area. So the question we look at two, the two main different societies. The traditional society, third world society, village societies, the traditional society, intelligence was linked mainly to interpersonal skills in order to get on with other people in the community, in the village. The intelligent person was the person who would get on with others into relationships. Relationships all important. It didn't matter if you could read or write. It was important to be able to get on with others. In industrial societies, Intelligence tends to revolve around the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Arithmetic, of course, doesn't begin with R, but we still count it as three R's, reading, writing, nor does writing begin with R. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. In industrial societies, those are considered to be the intelligent people. But if you actually look at those two definitions, they're both about survival. They're both about survival. Intelligence is the ability to be able to survive in the community you are in. Whatever you need to survive in that community. If you're in the middle of the jungle, you're intelligent if you can canoe. If you have a healthy body and you can run fast to escape wild animals. If you can climb a tree, those are the intelligent people in the jungle. If you go to Oxford University, the intelligent people are like yourselves linguists, mathematicians, and other people. But it is also felt that we ought to think about intelligence across the board. So intelligence is to do with survival wherever you are. It's also to do with the values that you have in the area, in the uh, setting that you are. It's to do with survival. It's also to do with values. And actually, having the same values as the others in the um, setting that you are. And the other area is the educational system. Now, in a traditional society, the education would have been through uh, the elders of the tribe, the elders of the village. way. 
but it's passing on the knowledge of the past generations to the future generations, teaching them how to survive. Education, obviously, in, in industrial societies through schools and universities. So, how do we actually look at the fact that it's a waste of human potential to say that only the linguists and only the mathematicians are the intelligence ones? Let's look at this concept of multiple intelligences. What do you already know? There are the letters of the multiple intelligences. You can call out the answers. What's the first L stand for? Linguistic. Alright? LMS. Logical, mathematical, scientific. VS, visual, spatial. All right, visual, spatial. M, musical. KP, kinesthetic body. N, naturalistic. I, interpersonal. I, intrapersonal. So here they are. Linguistic. Logical, mathematical, scientific, visual, spatial, musical, kinesthetic, bodily, interpersonal, intrapersonal, naturalistic. Ah, another one. Originally, it was just the first seven. Over time, people said, well, what about naturalistic? The naturalistic one was actually added later. It wasn't amongst the original ones. And the last one, the spiritual existential. People are now putting that forward as well. Now Howard Gardner, who I'm going to talk about in a minute, hasn't agreed to put that in because all the rest can actually meet age criteria. And that one doesn't meet them all. So he's rather sitting on the fence and he says, all right, there are eight and a half intelligences. I'm not prepared to go either side. So I always say to people, it's up to you if you want to include it or not, depending on your values and your understanding. It could be that it's actually the most important intelligence that actually underlies everything else. That might be how you would like to do it. However you refer to, that's up to you. So Gardner has these eight criteria which have to be met before any new suggestions about an intelligent can be added to the list. So what are they? Linguistics is to do with the intelligence of words, as you like you obviously know. Logical and mathematical is to do with number but also reason. Spatial is to do with pictures and images. And space, obviously. Musical, tone, rhythm, timbre. Bodily kinesthetic is the whole body, so the sportsman moving, and also the craftsman using hands. Interpersonal is to do with the social understanding and the social interaction with others. Intrapersonal is self-knowledge. Naturalistic in the context of the environment you're in. And existential, the intelligence of ultimate issues. So, those are the intelligences, but why did they um, come about? Intelligence was 